What's up, people? It's your girl Adela. Okay, this is just a public service announcement. Just to beg the children of Nigeria's information minister, that is Ogalai. This is not directed to Alaji, by the way. Bonjour, my father. You know, we welcome to this show. It's not directed to him. This video is made for his children. Wherever you guys are in the world, we are just begging you. I'm begging you on behalf of Nigerians. Please talk to your father on our behalf. At first, it was shocking. It was amusing. Now it is worrisome. Some of the things coming out of the man's mouth. How can the whole minister? of information be saying that oh school kidnapping takes place in other countries as well trying to normalize what is happening in nigeria even the most developed country in the world school kidnapping takes place iran you don't mean it huh, baba last year in the u.s we was witnessed at least three or four school kidnappings wait 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 a minute he he witnessed three or four school kidnappings in America last year. <laughs> Where did this happen? You guys, I beg, help me to Google it. Three or four kidnappings last year in this same, yes, in this America. I don't know how those of us living in America did not hear about these three to four kidnappings that happened in America, even though he witnessed it from, does he, he lives in Lori, right? Doesn't he live in Lori? He witnessed it from Lori, Nigeria. Please help me to check from Google. You, you can't find anything. So how is it that those of us living in America are not aware of these three to four kidnappings? Hey, the devil is a liar. Ogalai, in case you're watching. So, because if we say that uh, the man is lying now, some people will say that don't call elderly people liars. Alaji, you cannot just open your mouth and make up things as if you have monopoly over information that can be disputed. How can school children be kidnapped in America and you won't see it on CNN or other media companies? You have no fear of God. You have no fear of God. And we're not talking about parents going to school to kidnap their own children no? or children be kidnapped outside of school premises. He's saying authoritatively that school kids were kidnapped in three to four schools in America last year, just as terrorists have been doing in Nigeria. That is what he's trying to say. The last time that we heard about mass school kidnapping in America was in 1976 when 26 school children and their driver, their school bus driver, were kidnapped. And it's the largest kidnapping for ransom in the U.S. history. 20 six school kids all of them including the driver were rescued alive by the way and the kidnappers were arrested charged to court and sentenced to prison not like the way we are doing it in nigeria where they keep paying them huge ransom without arresting anybody and then they have more money to kidnap more people and that in case you are watching we all know that sometimes you speak from both sides of your mouth that is a polite way of saying that you are a liar i would never call you a liar by the way this is just what nigerians say but when you want to lie don't make up stories that can be disputed ah hey say and anywhere in the world, this is how terrorists, this is how they operate. But the important thing is to learn from what is happening and adapt. Adapt. So you, you, instead of going after the kidnappers, which the governor of Sanvara have met, the governor of Niger State have met, Sheikh Gumi has had meetings with these kidnappers, you know exactly where they are. So instead of going after them, you want Nigerians to adapt. To kidnappings. Mm -hmm. Okay, yeah, continue. Of course, but the important thing is that every security in the world must learn to adapt to the changing tactics of terrorists. Yeah, yeah, egg bam. Hey, father, <laughs> we are in trouble. Ah. The that they know what they are doing when they target children. But at the same time, we can have soldiers in every class. Who is asking you to have soldiers in schools? We're asking you to go after the bandits, after the kidnappers. You know what? Never mind. What is this? Killers by bandits is mostly accidental. Sheikh Gumi. Ah! And you see, even we call them killer headsmen. How many people did they kill? They only kill, sometimes in some of them are on drugs. No, he did not. When they kill, it must be accidental. Maybe somebody they took who was sick. But tell me who has they have killed. Did he just... He, father. Is this a Nollywood joke? Maybe a, a, a nomadic man went to that village and he was killed or lynched. So they come in a group and ransack the village, not to steal, just to revenge. Ah, Jesus. These bandits are actually an insurgency. Sometimes it's not even criminal. It may have started as criminal, but it turned into an insurgency. An insurgency, you cannot quell it with a gun. You have to negotiate. 
you have to dialogue. Why are they going into insurgency? Is because they are marginalized. Wow. Stop it. That, that's enough. That's enough. Bandits are marginalized. Wow. I mean, even the Igbos that are marginalized in Nigeria are not attacking people. They are only saying that they want to leave. And because they said they want to leave, the government keeps attacking them. But now he's making excuses for criminality, saying that it's because they are marginalized. You know what? That's enough for one day. Now the Minister of Information has normalized school kidnappings, saying that it happens in other countries as well, trying to justify what is happening in Nigeria. At the same time, shaking Kigumi has, has normalized banditry, saying it is not really criminality, it's just an insurgence, it's because they are marginalized. Hey, father, father, we are in trouble. You know what? Okay, that's enough for one day. Real quick, the federal government of Nigeria has announced that under the new Highway Development and Management Initiative, individuals will now be allowed to build operate or maintain assets on some federal highways that are up for concession. That is to say, individuals can now build and maintain highways in Nigeria. So already the Ministry of Works and Housing has received certificate of compliance to commence the procurement process for the concession of 12 federal highways. And they said that if individuals, you know, build these roads, they'll be allowed to install toll gates in order for them to recoup their investment. Okay. Is this supposed to be a development? Because I'm so confused right now. So not only do we have to source for our own water in Nigeria by digging borehole or provide our own electricity by buying power generators or solar panel, and even take care of our own security by building fences and hiring security men. Now we have to build our roads and highways as well. Please tell me, why exactly do we have a government in Nigeria? Boko Haram, you cannot go after. Bandits, you are seeking amnesty for the bandits. Every criminal now that comes from northern Nigeria, you seek amnesty for them. You refuse to go after the criminals. You want to normalize kidnapping. You want to normalize banditry. You want to you don't want to normalize all the crimes. But common water you cannot provide, good roads you cannot provide, table electricity you cannot provide. And now you want us to be building the highways as well. And I'm aware that it may be a good thing when private sector takes over because individuals or private companies tend to be more responsible than the the government. I'm aware of that, but it still makes me wonder exactly why we have the government. So the question remains, seriously, why do we have a government in Nigeria? You guys don't know much. Guess what? I'm just keeping it real. To Ghana, ladies and gentlemen, on Wednesday of this week, Ghana received their first batch of COVID 19 vaccine, 600,000 doses of the AstraZeneca vaccines through the COVAX program. Now, the COVAX program is an international coalition set up to give equal access to vaccines to all countries because wealthier nations, those who are making their own vaccines, a lot of them have been accused of hurting vaccines and leaving African countries behind. The UN back scheme to ensure that people from less wealthy countries are protected against COVID-19 is being hailed as a historic moment. This COVAX program is about equity and solidarity. So far, it's only citizens from the, let us say, the better off countries that have benefited from this. And from today, we're bringing equity. So this particular batch sent to Ghana was made in India. Last month, India and the African Union announced plans for the Serum Institute to supply 400 million doses of COVID-19 vaccines to Africa. Something that I find interesting though is, during the COVID lockdown, you know, so many countries developed their own vaccine, their own COVID-19 vaccine. India, Russia, US, UK, China, and so on and so forth. I think that we Africans should also step up so that when there's a world crisis, at least one African country should also be shipping the solution to other parts of the world. You know, we should also have our own vaccine instead of taking all the time. And that way, there won't be speculations about the West trying to kill us in Africa or, you know, not trusting what's coming from other countries. Honestly, I think we should also start preparing in terms of infrastructure so that we can also provide solutions to world crisis. You guys know I don't know much. Guess what? I'm just keeping it real. And moving on to Uganda, ladies and gentlemen, Bobby Wine, the opposition leader in the last election, Bobby Wine is now withdrawing his court case where he was challenging Museveni's win in the last election. As you guys know, Bobby Wine has challenged the claim that Museveni won that election. He said that it was rigged, but now he's withdrawing his court case, saying that judges at the Supreme Court have been bought and that they cannot be trusted. So what do you guys think about this? I've seen a lot of people online saying that, oh, he was just with 
wasting his time anyways. Museveni won't step down. What do you guys think? Should he have pursued the overturn of the election? Should he have, you know, pursued this or not? In the meantime, Bobby Wine celebrated his 39th birthday this month and I like to say that we need more young people in Africa to get into politics with the aim of making a difference, not with the aim of making money. People like him didn't start in one day. Just imagine when he started. You're never too young to voice your opinion or be active in seeking the progress of your country. Happy birthday to Bobby Wine. We're so happy for him. And speaking of Uganda, huge shout out to my Ugandan sister that is the beautiful Arao Ameni. She is the winner of the James Only Poetry Award. I believe I have a photo with Arao put up. Thank you very much. Anyway, she said that this is her first literary award given to her based on a poem that she wrote, a poem that has been published. It's titled, it's titled, Home is a Woman. I'll put the link to the poem in the description so you can read it. We're so proud of you, sis. Congratulations. You guys know I don't know much. Guess what? I'm just keeping it real. So in my last episode, in fact, I want to close my eyes. <laughs> I asked if anyone is interested in talking about money, just like money talks, you know, having methods about money, talking about saving money, investing money, building wealth. And to my shock, not just my surprise, but to my shock, like 80% of the comment section where people saying that they are interested, I'm like, oh, oh snap, what have I done? You know? Okay, so I'm willing to start that conversation, but I feel like I need to let people know, especially from the number of people saying that they are interested, I need to let you guys know that I'm not talking about a get rich quick scheme or a get rich quick method. This is not for those that want to hammer like just hammer suddenly so it's for those that actually want to understand how money works and it's a lot of work that needs to be done there will be like you know things that you have to do and sometimes you do the right thing for a long time before you see the result so this is what i'm going to do i'll take like a topic and discuss it and then i'll also find people who have lived it people who are really good in that aspect and i'll interview them and then i'll have a live stream just for people to ask me questions if anybody has a question so that's different from the show so i'll be announcing the dates for live streaming if anyone is interested in talking about about money you know please follow my social media pages for those updates i'll be announcing that in the meantime i actually started a series like that last year at the beginning of last year before covid hit and then everything was dabarud but in the meantime in january of last year i believe or maybe early february i think it was january of last year i made a video about how to save money and 140,000 people saw that video if you haven't seen that video please watch it that way you know where i'm coming from when i start making this series about money it's it wasn't even scratch in the surface at all it was just talking about why you have to save money and how to save money and we will still talk about that in the subsequent videos that i will be making but in the meantime i put the link to that video in the description please watch that video it would whet your appetite in terms of what i will be talking about when it comes to money and building wealth and then we'll go in depth in terms of like investment i would bring some investors on this show people who are into real estate people who are into stocks people who are into all kinds of investments investment and then they can talk to you guys and you can ask them questions as well so but in the meantime please watch that video poor quality hey i was just sitting there so making it <laughs> and i was just talking you know briefly but please watch that video the link in the description below so but like i said please follow me on instagram facebook and twitter i will be announcing like when those videos are coming up especially the live ones so that you can join us for those live videos <music> So, before I leave, we have a couple of birthday shout outs. I love birthdays. First of all, I got an email from a viewer named Tiara Olua Molu, all the way from Toronto, Canada. And she said, Good morning, Adiola. I love your show, and I have been watching since I was born. Oh, I was like what my daddy told me he's been watching you since 2012 i just wanted to inform you that my birthday is 22nd of february and i will be turning one. Oh, see how cute she is and then she said keep on doing what you do may god continue to guide and protect you and i sent you some pictures oh tiara Oluwa, happy birthday girl i can't believe you're one already like wow you look so cute and you're a big girl now and you look so beautiful next time invite me to your party <laughs> if you have jollof rice and Nigerian cake oh okay, yeah you get what I'm saying and now the second birthday shout out goes to none other than Omoyele Shorea who turned 50 say what how did this happen Mr. Show I can't believe that you are, you are now 50 what <laughs> when did this happen happy birthday hopefully the Nigerian government returns his international passport soon so that he could reunite with his family and lastly but not the least happy birthday to one of my mothers on this show this is one of the viewers Mrs. Ibukun Odusote I've talked about her on the show before she is the founder of Digitest. That's the summer camp where kids are taught about computer programming, coding, and anything tech in Nigeria, in fact, beyond Nigeria. So happy birthday, mommy. We love you. 
Now, guys, do not forget that if you need to run any errands in Nigeria or Ghana, it doesn't matter where you live in the world, don't forget, just contact helpmewaka.com. They will do all the errands for you. Getting your transcript, getting your West verification, getting groceries delivered to your loved ones, legalizing your documents at home and abroad, anything and everything that you need to get done, contact helpmewaka.com today. You will not be disappointed. All right, y'all, it's been real, and I'm keeping it right up in here. Don't forget to follow me on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram, and in video to subscribe to my youtube channel please make sure that you press the subscribe button until next time i'm gonna see you all later peace out